you know what we what we build it to be. It was going to be a, a tight game, two evenly matched teams, and uh, what it came down to was uh, was some mistakes and, and what we would we would call some unforced errors on our part. That um, there was really a difference in the game. When you had it fourth down and around the fifteen yard line of Ithaca, and you went for it. Uh, mm-hmm. Conventional wisdom might have said kick a field goal at that point, and you went for the first down. Uh, was that to make it a two-score game? Uh, that was to that, that was to um, basically solve the game away. Is what we were thinking was that we get it there on on fourth down. It was fourth and and one. I think it was less than one in that situation. And um, you know the thought was, hey, there's three minutes left. We'll get the ball, get a first down, force them to use all their timeouts, and you know we still have an opportunity to put the ball in the end zone um, or kick a field goal if we wanted to at that point. But um, the other, the, the other thing that um, that was in the back of, of, of actually in front of our head was their ability to block kicks. Um, they have a very good knack of, of blocking kicks, blocking field goals, uh, extra points, and. What we didn't want to do is didn't want to line up for a field goal uh, when, uh, even though it was a short field goal, uh, you know, in a makeable range, just to get that blocked and maybe get it returned or, or you know, lose field position in that manner. So, um, as, as you saw in, in overtime, you know, they were able to, to come through and block the kick, and, you know, that's what they, they're, you know, they're known for. Um, matter of fact, the field goal that we kicked at the end of reg- regulation uh, was actually kicked. Uh, by one of their jumpers, so um, that, was, that was something we wanted to stay away from. Um, you know, it, you never know what would happen. We, we um, had a you know kind of a snap infraction there. The ball never got back to the quarterback. But um, uh, I'll tell you this: is that there there was a hole there, um, a pretty big hole that uh, we would run through and um, definitely got the first down, but um, possibly even even, even scored a touchdown in that situation. So, so exactly what happened on that play? Because it was difficult to see if, if you weren't close to the play. Yeah, um, the ball slipped out of the uh, the center's hands uh, and never never got back to uh, never got, got back to the quarterback. Um, and it was something that um, happened a little bit earlier in the game uh, that we thought we had we had fixed, we had corrected, and everything. We had extra towels on the field, and um, hopefully the officials were rotating footballs, but. Um, you know, it's it's something that uh, you don't necessarily plan for is, is you know, for something like that to happen. And how was the team's uh, mood after the game? Obviously, a tough loss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, there was, you know, there's not anything that you can say that's going to you know, lift the spirits. Uh, you know, especially you know, not only being being Ithaca, but also being the first league game of the season. So, um, you know. This week, this week in practice, uh, our guys have put that behind us, put behind them, and we have we focused on on Buffalo State and uh, you know getting things back on track and, and getting uh, you know focusing on our fundamentals and the things that uh, you need to do to win ball games. And talking about Buffalo State, what are you expecting out of that team coming in? Yeah, that's um, that, that's a much improved team. Um, the, uh, the head coach has been there for two years. He's got his systems in. You can see that with their execution on the field um, in, in both sides of football, including special teams. Um, they have a, uh, they've have they got a really good running back, Ollie Wilson, number one. I know you like when I, when I give you the names. Um, he's, uh, he's a dynamic back and among the leaders in the league in uh, rushing yards. Uh, they've got a quarterback that... Um, you know, is uh, is mobile and uh, they're big on the offensive line. They present some uh, challenges to us because uh, they run some unconventional, you know, formations. Uh, extra offensive linemen in there. Um, you know, they have a lot of
And they just completed the national anthem here at the East Campus Stadium as we're getting ready for the RPI Buffalo State game, Liberty League game here coming to you live on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Before we get to today's action, we would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide this funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineering football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org, and you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we are sending something out over the air, we'll provide it for you on that feed. That is WRPI.org. Better weather here in Troy than we had last week. Uh, it's overcast in the 50s. I don't think we're expecting to have any rain. Uh, I think there was forecast for a chance of rain. We're not expecting to have that at all uh, if everything goes well. Uh, we saw last week when our play played Ithaca on this field that the rain may have caused some issues. Uh, coach talked about ball slipping out of the center's hand, which is a key play late in the fourth quarter. Uh, that did not help RPI, to put it mildly. Uh, RPI did lose that game in overtime last week, 20 to 17 to Ithaca. Buffalo State comes in after a rough game last week against Hobart, giving up 31 points in the second quarter, which took them out of that game. Coin toss was done before the national anthem. RPI won it. They will be kicking off as they deferred their selection to the second half. It will be RPI going left to right. Buffalo State right to left across your radio dial. Elstein is out to kick it for RPI. And boots it away. Goes, bounces inside the 20. It's going to be picked up by Jones. He has trouble with it around the 15-yard line to the 15, 20, 25, 30. And then he's down after he gets across the 30-yard line. So he recovered after uh, having trouble inside the 15, getting a handle on that ball. And he's going to get it out to the 32, they'll say. And that's where Buffalo State will start out the first possession of today's game. Buffalo State coming with a 1-4 record, losses to Brockport, Newport News Apprentice School. Then they beat Dean, which RPI did as well. 41-7 was the score there for Buffalo State, so both teams handled Dean very well. Lost to Rochester by 7, and then I mentioned at Hobart last week, that was a 45-21 loss for the Buffalo State Bengals. They have it first and 10 at their own 32. Noah Kimball is the quarterback for Buffalo State. Throws over the middle, and it's intercepted off a tip. Taken by Cortez Garrett at the 47 of Buffalo State. So the Bengals start out with, it's not the absolute worst thing that could happen, but it's close to it as they give up the ball on the first play from scrimmage. So Buffalo State, one play, and they are already on defense after they started out with the ball after the INT. Garrett with the INT for RPI. No score here in the first quarter. RPI starting out at the Buffalo State 47 yard line. Engineers with a three wide out formation. Kazanowski wants to throw. He's gonna put it up in the air and does he have his man? He does. Down near the 11 yard line is Meissner on the reception. And RPI, one play just out, uh, 15 yard line, pardon me just outside the 15, one play, they're in the red zone already. Kazagnowski to Meissner on the first play from scrimmage for the engineers. 14.30 to go here in the first quarter in Troy, no score, RPI in Buffalo State. At the 15 yard line, Kazagnowski throws over the middle, that is complete, and inside the five, and I think that was Kelly on the reception for RPI, It'll be down at the four yard line. That is Kelly on the reception for RPI. So that's another first down for the engineers. They'll have it first and goal at the four. <laughs> Buffalo State back on their heels already in this game. Turnover and then very quickly RPI is threatening to score for the first time. For the first either player, either team today, throw into the end zone looking for Faraday. That goes incomplete. So it'll be second and goal for RPI from the four. Uh, for Buffalo State, some deja vu in last weekend's game against Hobart, they had six turnovers. So obviously, you go back, you practice for a week, and the one thing you want to talk about is not turning the ball over. They do turn it over. However, that was off a tip. So Garrett got that off a tip. It wasn't thrown right at him. Uh, if you don't have a tip, you may not have the interception. But he does. RPI did, and now RPI is second in goal 
inside the five. The give is to Buckley. Buckley's gonna get stopped right around the two yard line. So there was a penalty on a previous play. I missed that. There was a penalty. It was half the distance to the goal. So that was first down. And now it's second down. Uh, my mistake. I missed the penalty on that previous play. So it would be second down and goal now for RPI inside the five at about the two-yard line. Uh, fakes the handoff to Kazakowski. Fakes the handoff to Buckley. He's going to get pressured, and he'll get sacked back at the five-yard line. Uh, was looking downfield, then thought might run for it, saw nothing open, and then ended up having to eat the ball back at the five. So Buffalo State, uh, despite the penalty, they've had two stops here on RPI when it was first and goal from the two. Now it's third and goal from the five for the engineers. If you're present in the arena or the stadium here, you'll notice the scoreboard doesn't work. It will not be working for today's game. The information is up on the video screen, but that does disappear when they show a replay. Third down, RPI, touchdown to Faraday. Kazignowski finds Faraday cutting across the goal line. Gets him the ball, and RPI has a 6-0 lead with 12.54 to go in this first quarter. Elstein out to try the extra point. Meissner is the holder. Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So make that 7-0 with 12.54 to go in this first quarter. So I was talking, the scoreboard doesn't work. They were having trouble with it last week. If you listen to last week's game, you'll notice I mentioned that they didn't have the down and distance, ball on, all that. Uh, that was part of the problem. And they were talking before the game, and they, they, they were sent the wrong part, essentially, to fix the scoreboard. And so they haven't been able to fix it. They'll probably have it fixed this week for the next home game, which is against Rochester in two weeks. Uh, which, barring a postseason game here, would be the last game of the season here at the East Campus Stadium. But of course, the stadium is also used for other sports. It's not just football that plays here. Anyway, that's the reason why the scoreboard, if you're here, isn't working. And the statistics are on the screen, but they disappear when they show the replay. The other scoreboard uh, on the arena side, it just shows you the time, basically. That is fully functional. So that's a little rundown of what's going on here at the East Campus Stadium. It's Elstein to kick it away. And it's taken inside the 10-yard line to the 15, to the 20. And Bodie, it looks like Chris Bodie on the return for Buffalo State is out around the 20-yard line. So Buffalo State will come out with their second possession. First play from scrimmage on their first possession, interception, and RPI turned that into seven. So I'm looking and the Noah Kimball and Amir Cameron are listed as the quarterbacks for Buffalo State. They are eight and nine. And right now looking at the way the jersey is, I can't tell if that's an eight or a nine. They're gonna be running it on the ground on first down and that's going to go to Ale Wilson. The running back for, or Ollie Wilson, the running back for Buffalo State. Uh, the coach called him Ollie Wilson. It looks like Ale Wilson, so. We'll just go with Wilson as we go through this game. Wilson is up ahead to the 26 for a pickup of six as Buffalo State started out at the 20s. Seven nothing, RPI leads here in the first quarter. Buffalo State with their second possession. Snap, goes to Wilson once again. Wilson straight ahead and the defense is gonna stop him. I thought he, yeah, they're gonna stop him short of the 30. The officials come in, he's not, he has to make it to the 30. Buffalo State has to make it to the 30 and he is not there. That'll make it third down and very short for Buffalo State. Two 
two receivers on the right. Bengals stay on the ground. Wilson's got it. Wilson's got a first down. He goes off the right side of the line. He gets ahead, escapes one tackle. Now he's going to get brought down for RPI. That was Diagostino had a good chance to get him before he picked up another couple of yards out to the 41 where he's eventually stopped. Uh, so Wilson cuts it to the right, then heads upfield and gets a first down for Buffalo State. 11.20 to go here in the first quarter. RPI versus Buffalo State. RPI has a 7-0 lead. Three wide receiver formation for Buffalo State. Ball's at the 41 yard line. Wilson on the carry, goes right again. Along the 40, starts to cutting it upfield. He'll only get about a yard. RPI's defense comes in and takes him out. So he'll pick up about a yard. Second down and nine for Buffalo State. I was going to say, Ollie Wilson's a running back. Wide receivers, Tariq Nelson, Nick Bruce, and Darian Jones. Buffalo State's uh, fullback, Ian Behrens. Second down throw. That is complete out near the 49. And immediately out of bounds on the reception was Tariq Nelson. So Buffalo State picks up a chunk out to the their own 49, they need two more yards for a first down. They need to get on RPI's side of the field. And now set up a third down and two. Alex Waskai, Kenya Onama, Anthony Lusinski, and Wilson's gonna take the carry here on third down, and he's not gonna get to the first down marker. Wilson's going to be stopped short. He is taken down by Ethan Johnson of RPI. They'll give his forward progress at the line of scrimmage. So it will be a fourth and two for Buffalo State. And if you're one and four, you might as well keep the offense out there. Which is what they are going to do on, it looks like they're going to do on fourth down and two. Paul Perlman and Jonah Wisniewski or the rest of the line for Buffalo State. That is their offense. Fourth down and two, and heavy pressure knocked away. The pass is knocked away on fourth down by the engineers. That was Fernandez who got a hand on that, got in front of the intended receiver, knocked the ball away. Quarterback went down as he threw it right before he was about to get hit. And that's an incompletion, and Buffalo State turns it over on downs at their own 40 a uh, little 49 yard line they will call it. It'll be first and 10 RPI at the Buffalo State 49. We have 8.59 to go in this first quarter. RPI up seven, nothing. Engineers on first down. They're gonna give it to White. White's gonna take it to the left side and he'll get ahead for about three yards. RPI's offense. Jake Kazignowski is the quarterback. Running back Christian Buckley, but Caden White is in there right now. Wide receivers are Hayden Faraday, Sterling Walker Sutton, and Gil Goldsmith. The tight end is Shane Allison. Second down and seven RPI from the 46. Kazignowski throws. He'll get a first down to Allison. That's complete, and he makes it down to the 28. Usaka Butcher on the tackle for Buffalo State at the 28 yard line. First down engineers, 8.15 to go here in the first quarter, seven nothing, RPI is on top. Danny Beckenhus, Nicholas Cirilli, uh, Xavier Gitan, JT Morello and Aiden Montero are the front line for RPI. Pass is incomplete on first down as Kazagnowski was looking downfield. Uh, doesn't make the connection and RPI will be looking at a second and 10. So it is Cameron nine in there 
as the quarterback for it's not Kimball. If I called Kimball before, I was wrong. It is definitely Amir Cameron in at QB for Buffalo State. RPI goes to the ground on second down, and they're going to lose yards as White gets caught in the backfield, and he's going to get pushed back. Nicholas Moore, Shimon Phillips, and Orlando Cabrera, along with Isaiah Cox, are the line for Buffalo State. Sincere Green, Kenneth Mosley, and Ivan Cervantes are the linebackers, the defensive backfield, Michael Estique, Anderson, Jose, Jose Jima, uh, Ethan Biscaro, and Sashika Basaka Butcher are the Defensive, that's a defensive backfield for Buffalo State. Third down and about 13 for RPI as they are back to their own 36. As Kasignowski's looking to throw, puts it upfield into the end zone and he was looking for Migoi, but he was double covered in the end zone and the patch wasn't, the pass was not catchable it looks like. So third down doesn't work for RPI. Now RPI is looking at a fourth and 13. And the punt team is going to come out for RPI. So RPI second possession after they get it when Buffalo State turned it over on downs. Not able to do anything with it, assuming they punt here. Snap back. Kick is away from RPI's punter. And that's going to be taken inside the 10 and a fallback that was Burke on the punt for RPI. And then Biscaro on the punt return. He falls backwards as he catches it and he is down at the 10 yard line. So Buffalo State will take over there. This will be their third possession of this first quarter. 10, for me, seven nothing RPI leads. Cameron in a quarterback for Buffalo State. Single wide out to each side, one man in motion. And Buffalo State will go to the ground and that might get them two yards. Not a lot there. What we have? Looks like Cody Phillips is in the backfield now for Buffalo State. So it's Cody Phillips on the carry for the Bengals. So second and nine officially for Buffalo State at their own 11 yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, one man in the backfield. Pass, that's a complete wide open on the far side. That's the right side. And that's gonna be a first down out to the 24 yard line. Nobody was covering him. It was like Nicholas Bruce, number 88 on the reception. Yes, Bruce on the reception for Buffalo State. So he gets the Bengals a first down out to the 24 yard line. First and 10, Buffalo State there, seven nothing RPI leads. We have 6.05 to go in this first quarter. Handoff goes to Phillips. Phillips goes to the right, runs into a pile of engineers on the right side, and he'll only make it out to about the 28. Only, it's about a four yard gain for Buffalo State. Ethan Johnson, Nate Sicard, Brian McNeil are the line up front for RPI. CJ Shoemaker, Success Frederick, Desmond Von Tobel, and Anthony Diagostino are the linebackers. Cassius Johnson, Cortez Garrett, Diego Fernandez, and Carlos Davis are the defensive backfield for RPI. So it is reunion and alumni weekend here at RPI. There's a lot of stuff going on on campus. Second down for Buffalo State. Cameron doesn't see anything downfield, has to run with the ball. Cameron's going to get caught near the line of scrimmage. He'll get a few yards, though, out of that as he keeps his feet moving, and he's out to about the 30-yard line. So he gets a couple of yards, and it'll be third down and four, and it looks like Cameron is injured. He is still on the ground after that play, so we will have an official timeout here at the East Campus Stadium. 5.03 to go, quarter number one, RPI 7 and Buffalo State, nothing.
Interesting stat that stands out to this point. RPI is negative three rushing yards. 61 receiving yards, but negative three rushing yards. So that drive that got RPI the touchdown, which was a short field drive, they got the interception. And it was a 47 yard drive, was more on the, in the air than on the ground. As Buffalo State is looking at Cameron on the far side, and now Noah Kimball, who was listed on first on the depth chart, which is what got me confused as to who was out there. He is now practicing over on the sidelines. It looks like he will be coming in at quarterback as obviously Cameron can't play for at least one play here. He's being helped up and helped off the field. So I don't think his return is imminent in this game. RPI leads the series against Buffalo State. Five wins versus only one loss. That's an 833 win percentage. And RPI is undefeated against Buffalo State in Liberty League play. Buffalo State, this is their fourth season in the league. Would have been their fifth had COVID not canceled the 2020 season. Third down and about four for Buffalo State. Two wide outs each side. Kimball's in the backfield. He throws. It's knocked away by the D. Raffioli got in front of that and knocked it down. Had it been a little bit lower, he probably could have had an interception on that play. But he knocks it down on third down. It's incomplete. And fourth down at their own 30. And Buffalo State will be sending out the punt team. Chandra is the punter and place kicker for Buffalo State. He kicks it away, low kick, taken by Walker Sutton. Uh, inside his 40, stays on his feet for a long time, but really doesn't get a whole lot of yards there. He's, he stopped at the 38. He was never able to get free. He was in tackled, but he couldn't really get any free, any room to maneuver. And so he has stopped, and RPI will take over at their own 38. We are in the first quarter in Troy, 4.38 to go in this quarter, and RPI has a 7 to nothing lead on Buffalo State. Engineers first and 10, heavy on the left on this formation. Buckley takes the hand off straight up the middle, and Buckley is stopped at the 43, so that's a pickup of five. It is weird, I'll tell it right now, it is weird to every time look over at the scoreboard and not see anything on it. You're, you go to, especially if it's, a, if, it's the, if it's the arena, stadium, whatever that you normally broadcast games from, you're broadcasting half the games from, and you have a pattern and that pattern is interrupted, it is really weird. Buckley takes the handoff on second down. He's going to cut the corner, go left, turn it upfield, and he makes it out to the RPI 49, and that'll be a first down for the engineers. Referee for today's game, Darren Tyson is the referee. He only had one call. That was on RPI's first drive. Engineers first and 10 at their own 49. 3.48 to go in the first quarter. 7-0. RPI is on top. Flag comes out from the referee. Allison with the reception. Gets to the Buffalo State 45, but I've got a feeling this is a holding call. Tyson, the referee, is the one who threw the flag. And RPI is walking backwards. So this, this call is going against RPI. The holding call brings the ball back to RPI's 39-yard line. It'll be first and 20 for the engineers. Single receivers each side. Tight end on the right. You've got a slot man on the right as well. Handoff goes to Buckley. Buckley straight ahead, and he's only going to get a couple out to the 41. 
So the running game is having trouble getting going here for RPI. Only perhaps 10 yards rushing for RPI, depending on whether or not that rush got on this. Yep, that just went up and they did. So 10 yards rushing for RPI, and we're 12 minutes into this game. RPI's third possession of the game. Kazanowski wants to throw on second and long. He's going to sling it to Goldsmith, who can't handle the pass at about the 45-yard line. That was a side armor looking for Goldsmith. I don't, I'm not sure Goldsmith was really expecting the throw. Goes incomplete, and RPI is now looking at a third and long. Lazarus Morgan is the head coach for Buffalo State. And they are 1-4 overall, 0-2 in the conference so far. And, of course, Ralph Vicerny, the head coach for RPI, 4-1 overall, but an 0-1 in the conference. And that's a big one in that loss column with the loss last week to Ithaca. Kasignowski on third down, wants to throw a pump fake. He's only got a three-man rush he's looking at. He's got time now, rolling out to his right, puts the ball up in the air. Does he have a man? Faraday, yes, Faraday at the 36 of Buffalo State. And that'll be a first down for RPI. That was only a three-man rush for the Bengals. Uh, looking at the replay, there's only three people even near the line. They dropped eight back on coverage. So it was eight versus five on coverage, but Kazignowski still manages to find Faraday for the reception. Kazignowski, again, a three-man rush, has time pass. That's complete to the 26. Kelly has it. And that's close to another first down. Are they going to give it to him? Yes, that'll be a first down. Ball's just touching the 25, actually. So that'll be another first down for RPI. The chains move. We have 2.15 to go here in quarter number one. RPI 7 and Buffalo State nothing. Engineers first and 10 at the 25. Handoff goes to Buckley. Flag comes out. Buckley's along the 10 to the 5. Buckley's in, but I don't think this is going to count. I think this one's coming back. Flag came out when Buckley was back into the 25-yard line. And RPI isn't celebrating as they're going backwards. So probably another holding call against the engineers. Yes, that is the call. Holding against RPI. So instead of a touchdown, they'll lose 10. If you're looking at the live stats, don't. Uh, that got updated with the score. Actually, the scoreboard did too, and RPI TV did too, but it's not. It's, it's back to 7 nothing. RPI leading. It was a nice run, but it was helped out with a hold. First and 10 RPI, they're back at the 35, so the hold occurred just one yard beyond the line of scrimmage. And pass to Kelly, that's incomplete. Went off his hand and was still bouncing around or in the air as a couple of defenders got eyeballs on it, but weren't able to get any hands on it, and it goes incomplete. RPI now with second and 20. A little under 20, I think. They don't have to quite get to the 15. Kazanowski throws, and that's going to be intercepted by Buffalo State. Bengals have it, and running out of bounds into the RPI sideline. Who was that? That was Lestique, Michael Lestique, on the interception for Buffalo State. So RPI's the first turnover of the game, and the drive fails. RPI turned the ball over four times last week. And if you heard the interview, coach even said, you know, a few too many or something along the lines of a few too many mistakes, too many unforced errors by RPI last week. So first and 10 for Buffalo State at their own 31. Seven nothing RPI leads with 148 to go in the first quarter. Kimball still in there, a quarterback for 
Buffalo State hands off the ball to Wilson and Wilson gets about a yard on that first down play. Second down and nine for Buffalo State. Shift the receiver to the left. Throw, that is complete to Jones. Jones has got open room to the RPI 40, 30, 25, 20. He'll get caught from behind by Carlos Davis inside the 20. Where are they gonna put him out of bounds? Davis took him down, forced him out at the RPI 14 yard line. Big gain by Buffalo State. Their own 31 down to the RPI 14. They are in the red zone for the first time today. We're under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Seven nothing. RPI is on top. Wilson in the backfield, directly behind Kimball. Wilson takes the handoff, he's gonna go left, find some room, keeps moving, keeps pushing the line, and he's gonna be down at the eight. That was Wilson not giving up. He gets all the way down to the eight yard line. Line of scrimmage with the 14, so a pickup of six for Buffalo State. Bengals do not have to run another play in this first quarter, as time is winding down, and they won't. They are going over to the sideline. So that's going to do it for the first quarter here in Troy. 7-0 RPI leads. As I look over to the Buffalo State side of the field, there is a stretcher coming out. And I have a feeling this might be for the starting quarterback, Amir Cameron. He was the only injured player that required help to get off the field. So I have a feeling he is going to be taken away and will not be back in today's game. So it looks like it's going to be Kimball the rest of the way for Buffalo State. Team switch sides, it'll be the Bengals going left to right, RPI right to left across your radio dial in this second quarter. at the eight yard line for a second and four for Buffalo State as we are going to get back into action here. Buffalo State has the wind as it is going with them in this second quarter. Kimball fakes the handoff to Wilson, takes it himself, runs straight ahead, and I think he ran into his own lineman. He's going to be down, he's going to be down near the five. It'll be a third and one, uh, but I think Kimball ended up running into his own man. I don't know if that was a design play or a broken play on the handoff, but I think if his man hadn't been there, he may have gotten a touchdown. Third down and about one at the five for Buffalo State. Only one receiver is wide, that is Bruce. Now he's gonna move in towards the line of scrimmage. Handoff goes to Wilson, Wilson cuts left and he doesn't make it on third down. Wilson. Could not turn that upfield. The defense came in, stopped him. I believe that was Garrett who got up and got the tackle for RPI. And it'll now be fourth and about two for Buffalo State. Do they get points or they go for the touchdown? And now we're going to get an official timeout on the field as there's an RPI player who's having difficulty getting to his feet. 13.57 to go here in the first half in Troy. RPI 7, Buffalo State nothing. As for RPI, that was D'Agostino, who had trouble getting up. He's gonna make it off under his own power.
So Buffalo State coming back to the line. Offense is staying out there. Fourth and two at the six. Wilson is next to Kimball in the backfield. Four wide out formation for Buffalo State. And a flag comes out, pass towards the end zone. That is out of bounds. Uh, Bruce made the reception. He caught it, but he fell first leg out of bounds. So that was not going to count. But there's also a flag on the play. That's a fourth down play. RPI, if it's against, it's holding against Buffalo State. RPI declines it, and RPI will take the ball on downs at their own six yard line. Thirteen thirty-five to go in this first half. RPI seven, Buffalo State nothing. RPI with a long field. It's ninety-four yards for a touchdown right now for RPI. Kazaknowski out of the shotgun. He's almost in his end zone. He's between the one and the zero. Handoff goes to White, gets hit on the arm. Flag comes out as this game is getting a little sloppy. White is eventually stopped at about the 13 yard line. And the officials, this came from the sideline. The line judge is the one who threw this flag. If it's holding, it's only a loss of three for RPI because it'll be half the distance to the goal line. Actually, the, the infraction occurred at the seven, so they'll actually get a half yard out of this. It was half the distance. Yep, holding against RPI. So this should go back to about the three and a half yard line. That's where they'll place it, just beyond the three, actually. That's where they'll place it. So it is a holding call, but it's not a lot of yards against RPI because of the position they're in. Seven nothing, engineers have the lead back just beyond their own three for a first and 13. Two receivers right, one left, man in the slot on the right. White is in the backfield. And Kazaknowski's gonna take it himself. He's got room on the right, and he's gonna get a good chunk of yards there. He's gonna get out past the 10 to the 12. So he picks up almost nine. The play, the play ran beautifully. Everybody basically went to the offense's right, thinking White had the ball. He was going that way, and Kazaknowski took it to the left. And it took the people in the back to get it, get him for Buffalo State. Kazaknowski keeps it again. And he's out beyond the 15 on second down, just beyond the 15 yard line on that second down carry. That's gonna set up a third and about one for RPI. RPI and Buffalo State first met back in 2015. And it's one of those rare things for RPI. They first played an opponent, opponent at a neutral site. That was in New Britain when they were holding the ECAC bowl games at a single site that, that didn't work out they quit that and went back to campus sites but that's where they first played in 2015 third down Kazaknowski keeps it again and Kazaknowski gets out he'll get a first down on the forward progress out to the 18 yard line he gets pushed back but forward progress has easily got him the first down at the 18 and RPI will move the chains so with New Britain back in 2015 the team's first met in the ECAC that was a night game I remember it was dark and RPI won that game 20 to 13. So that was their first meeting. First down for RPI, seven nothing there on top. White takes the pass in the flat on the left and he's only gonna get out to the 20 yard line before the defense takes him down. Cervantes on the tackle for Buffalo State. Okay, I see what my problem was figuring out the quarterback. The nines don't have any tail on them. They just go straight up and down. So when Cameron was out there, I kind of I thought I thought part of the, the number was being obscured. White on second down takes the carry, and he's going to get caught in the backfield. Green in there on the tackle for Buffalo State, and that's going to be a loss of yards back to the 15. So RPI's had a you tough hear, going man? here, especially on the ground. They lost a couple of yards there. They had 25 yards going into that play. 
and that's probably a loss of five so r p i s rushing total so far today are around twenty yards third down and thirteen as the ball's back at the fifteen yard line for r p i Four wide out formation. Kazagnowski throws. That'll be short of a first down as the tackle is made immediately. And there was no chance for, I think it was Brad on the tackle for Buffalo State. There was no chance for the receiver to move downfield for RPI. Stopped at the 24 yard line, and this will be a punting situation. So a failure on third down conversion. RPI was not good on third down conversions against Ithaca. They were three of five in this game right now. <laughs> Burke punts it away. It's going to bounce out of bounds. It'll hit the ground out of bounds with what would be the RPI 47, and they're actually gonna spot it at the 47. That probably stole a yard or two away from Buffalo State there. 9.49 to go, first quarter. RPI 7, Buffalo State nothing. So not a lot of scoring here in Troy so far. Just RPI on their first possession after they got the ball. First play from scrimmage for Buffalo State was intercepted and RPI took the ball, drove down to about a half field to get the touchdown. And after that, yeah. there's been nothing. Wilson with the carry, keeps stringing this out on the left. He gets grabbed by a bunch of guys and finally tackled after a gain of about two. Von Tobel on the tackle for RPI. Wilson went off a bunch of players. He is their feature back for Buffalo State. If you want to be a good running back, you're going to have to break tackles. And you're going to have to drag people along with you sometimes. So a pickup of two for Wilson. It'll be second down and eight for Buffalo State. Two receivers each side. One man in the backfield. Kimmel throws, and that's over the head of the intended receiver. Beyond his reach, he was looking for Nelson on the Buffalo State side of the field, and that is incomplete. So it'll be third down and eight for Buffalo State. They are one for four on third downs, 0 for two on fourth down. Everybody knows at this point, RPI has a very tough defense. Kimball throws and Nelson can't get it. He's a little high and out of reach and it's incomplete for Buffalo State. They're now one for five on third downs and the punt team comes out for the Bengals. Nick Chandra back to punt. Walker Sutton is inside his own 20 awaiting this kick. Boots it away. Walker Sutton takes it near his 10. 15, 20, sideline, 25, 30, up to the 40. Punters ahead of him to the 50, RPI 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and Walker Sutton is caught. Is he in? He is in. Just barely gets in before his knee touches as he got caught by one of the other by a Buffalo State player right at the goal line. He is in though for the touchdown and RPI has a 13 to nothing lead. For Buffalo State, they needed just maybe two more yards to stop a touchdown there. Because as I mentioned, he, he got tackled right as he got to the goal line. It was close enough that if it was the NFL, they'd review it. Watching the replay right now, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. There he's caught, yeah. If this was the NFL, they would have reviewed that one. Because 
It, it was bang bang as to whether the ball crossed the plane or the knee hit the ground. Elstein out for the extra point. Snap spot. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So we have 8:43 to go here in the first half, and RPI leads 14 to nothing. It's going to be that punt return is going to be around 90 yards. Uh, depending on how they score that officially, it's going to be somewhere between 88 and 90 yards on the return. 89, they're going to call it. His rear foot was right near the 10 yard line, and they'll say that that actually counts as the 11. RPI's offense didn't have to get on the field for them to make this a two-score game. The Buffalo State, after six turnovers last week, only one turnover today, but now a special teams touchdown against them. That does not help. RPI called for a personal foul. And they'll back the kickoff to the 20 yard line. So Buffalo State, this will not be in all likelihood hitting the end zone. Buffalo State should get decent field position at least. And a fumble on the kickoff, grabbed by one of the up men and covered at the 35. So they still get pretty good field position. The return man came up to get it. It went off him. Fumble or whatever, it went 10 yards. It's a live ball, anybody can get it. And then one of the up men, it bounced right to him and he grabbed it and fell down. And Buffalo State maintains possession. Yes, it goes off the chest. That was Bodie on the return. It goes off his chest and it went to the lineman and he grabbed it. So Buffalo State has that 35 yard line down by 14 in the second quarter. First and 10 for the Bengals at their own 35. Kimball looking downfield and ends up having to run with the ball. Gets it back to the line of scrimmage. He's to the 40, to the sideline. He's gonna run out of bounds just beyond the 42. They'll, they'll call him out to 43. Amir Cameron, the starting quarterback for Buffalo State. The, they've brought the stretcher out for him and he has been taken away. So he is out. And I think it's safe to assume not to return, so it's Kimball's game at this point. Second and two for Buffalo State at the 43-yard line. Coming up on 8.05 to go in this first quarter. Not a quick-moving first quarter. Kimball keeps it himself, goes left, gets, uh, got to the first down marker. Ball came loose after he hit the ground. So he hit the ground, ball came loose, and they'll say, did forward progress make it to the 45 or not? They're looking at the sideline now. Is this a... Nope, first down. They will signal first down. So they'll say the ball is just touching the 45. And they're trying to get the yard marker guys to move. Seven and a half to go, first quarter. No, second, first half, or I mean second quarter, first half. RPI leading 14 to nothing here at the East Campus Stadium in Troy. Snap, goes back to Kimball. Kimball's gonna run with it, he's to the 50, Kimball's out of bounds at his own 48. No, 49, they'll call him out to 49, so he picks up about six for Buffalo State. So that's 57 rushing yards now for Buffalo State. compared to RPI's 20. RPI has not gotten the ground game going today. 
course, RPI with two touchdowns for the 14 0 lead. One a short field after an interception, and the other one is an 89 yard punt return by Walker Sutton. Second down and four at the RPI 49 for the Bengals. Uh, turn around, handoff to Phillips. Phillips goes left, and he's going to get stopped near the first down marker. That'll be a first down. Uh, so running left is working well for Buffalo State. First and 10 for the Bengals. We have 6.20 to go in the first half. 14 to nothing, RPI on top. Phillips has to do a stutter step in the backfield because he didn't see the hole. He had just cut a little bit to the left, moves forward, and gets down to the 42. Second and seven at the 42 yard line for the Bengals. This handoff straight ahead, right into the arms of Johnson of RPI. Wilson back in at running back and he ran right into Johnson's arms and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Once he made that last step forward, there was no place else for him to go. Third down and seven at the RPI 42 for Buffalo State. They are one for five on third downs today. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Wilson was in the backfield. Kimball throws and that is complete and that'll be down to the 34 and that's a first down. That was Darian Jones on the reception for Buffalo State. He's got a first down to the RPI 34. 4.45 to play here in the first half. RPI 14, Buffalo State nothing. As Buffalo State is moving the ball, they got it with, they got it about four minutes, over four minutes ago. And they've made it from the 35 to the RPI 34. So about 29 yards in a little over four minutes. Snap straight back to Wilson, and Wilson's going to run it up ahead to about the 20. Where are they going to mark him down? They'll mark him down at the 26 on the straight ahead run. So Kimball was not in there on the last play and he is not in there again. The only person in the backfield is Ollie Wilson. So Wilson takes a snap, runs straight ahead, goes through the line to the 20 and Wilson is down to the 16 and that'll be a first down for Buffalo State. There's a scuffle afterwards. Carlos Davis had words with one of the Buffalo State players. One of his teammates pulled him away from that. No flags on that play. So perhaps just simply a case of strong language. 320 to go first half. RPI up 14 nothing. Buffalo State with a first and 10 at the RPI 17. Kimball back in at quarterback for Buffalo State. A single signal, one of his receivers to move towards the line. He'll turn around, hand off to Wilson. Wilson's got a hole, he's down inside the 10. And Wilson weaves his way and he's down to the nine. Not a first down for Buffalo State, but they are inside the nine yard line as time is winding down on the first half. RPI will get the ball to start out the second half. They won the toss and deferred their selection. So second and two for the Bengals. 
We're down to two and a half to go in the half. Kimmel gets a snap, teaches himself, and runs right into D'Agostino, and the ball comes loose. D'Agostino picks it up. He loses the ball. Now who's got it at the 20-yard line? Buffalo State had it, lost it. It went back to the 20. RPI lost it. Who has it? I think Buffalo State has it. If, if, that's, if the first one's a fumble, this should be a first down for Buffalo State because if RPI got it, which they did, and if that's a fumble, the play wasn't stopped on forward progress. If that is a fumble, that's a change of possession. So if it goes back to the 20 and RPI fumbled it and Buffalo State has it, then it should be a first down for Buffalo State at the 20. The officials are talking about it right now because I'm not sure whether the play was stopped on the initial fumble or what we believe to be a fumble. Yes, so that's what happened. There's two fumbles on the play. Buffalo State fumble, recovered by D'Agostino. He fumbled it at the 20, recovered by Buffalo State. And so Buffalo State will have a first and 10 at the RPI 20. It's a change of possession, then another change of possession, the down to reset. 154 to go. Clock stopped on the change of possession. So it's 154 to go in the first half. 14 nothing RPI leads. Buffalo State first and 10 at the RPI 20. Kimball is looking end zone, and that is incomplete. I would, it was intended for Jones. Uh, I, I think Garrett was the man who got in there, but I'm not sure he broke it up so much as Jones just couldn't get the pass. Yeah, that was a little bit too high for Jones looking at the replay. So it was really the pass was off target, not so much that he got hit right as the pass arrived. So second down and 10 at the 20. And the handoff goes to Phillips straight ahead, and he's going to be, well, it's going to be a gang tackle inside the 15-yard line as finally he goes down. They'll say he was down at the 14. So a pickup of six on second down. So an odd quirk of the way this game is working out, this is really the seventh offensive possession for Buffalo State, and RPI's only offense has only been out there four times. And RPI's offense has only had the ball once in this second quarter. Because a punt return for a TD, the offense didn't come out, and then technically, and we've got a flag on the play. Referee threw a flag with about eight seconds left on the play clock. False start against Buffalo State. That'll back them up near the 20. So as I was saying, RPI's offense didn't come out after the punt return because it went for a touchdown. So the Buffalo State offense came back out there again. And then the two fumbles on the same play meant that Buffalo State started a new drive and RPI's offense didn't get out there because the defense got the ball then gave up the ball again. So Buffalo State's had seven offensive possessions and RPI's only had four in the first half. We're down to 107 to go in the half. Third down and nine from the 19 for Buffalo State. Kimball throws, and it's a touchdown. Kimball finds Bruce right at the goal line. He is in for six as we've come to just under a minute to play here in the first half. So call that a 19, I'll say that's a 19 yard. Touchdown reception. Sandra, Chandra out for the extra point. It is up and it is good. Kimball is the holder on that. So with 59.8 seconds left in this first half, Buffalo State has gotten on the board. Now an RPI 14 to seven lead. So for RPI, they've got a minute to play with here and they will get the ball to start out the second half. 
Just a reminder, you are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Stutt on the call for you today. RPI versus Buffalo State in Liberty League action. Uh, one of these two teams will be getting their first Liberty League win of the season, and the other one will remain winless. As RPI comes in 0-1 in the conference, and Buffalo State comes in 0-2. Chandra tees the ball up at the 35 yard line for the Bengals. Boots it. And this will hit the end zone and RPI will take it at the 25 yard line. And we've got a flag coming out afterwards as the harsh language has turned into something a bit more. And who is this going to be against? It's, it's RPI either getting it deeper in their own territory or out to the 40. Or both teams called and it stays where it is, who knows? Well, we're gonna find out. Nope, they're gonna wave it off. They will wave off the flag. So it'll be RPI's ball at their own 25 with a smidge under a minute to play here in the first half. The, the ball's in the wrong place. I, I, I'm watching everybody line up with the ball at the 28, but isn't it a touchback, the ball's at the 25? I don't know how the ball got... <laughs> I have no idea how the officials placed this at the 28. Because that's probably where the flag was. They probably put it where the flag was, but it's a touchback. There was no play. So now they appropriately put the ball at the 25 yard line. Nobody's perfect. Four wideout formation, first and 10, RPI. Kazignowski under pressure, gets away from it initially, still running around, still running around. Has the, he's running, he has to run out of bounds at the 30. So here's what happened. The problem he had was that Nicholas Moore was after him and just would not give up. Uh, and Kazignowski couldn't turn, he was, he was running to his left and he just couldn't turn to throw. Uh, he was trying to, but Moore was right behind him. If he, if he turns and slows down, Moore is going to tackle him. So he had no option. He couldn't thro physically throw the ball, and he had to ball run out of bounds just beyond the 30. So that takes about 10 seconds off the clock. It'll be a second and four RPI at the 31. And as time is winding down in the half, past the Faraday, that's complete out to the 36. That'll be a first down. So the clock stops temporarily as they move the chains. And now we have a timeout. I will assume that this is RPI. We're going to assume, I didn't see the official indicate who it was. So we're going to assume that this is an RPI timeout given the circumstance. 44.9 seconds left in the first half. By my count, that's RPI's first timeout of the half. 14 to seven, RPI leads. Two receivers each side. White alone in the backfield next to Kazignowski. Kevin Nelson gets a snap, throws. That's complete on the far side. Goldsmith steps out of bounds at the 45. So there's 39 point second, point six seconds left in the half. Is that right? There's a post blocking part of the only scoreboard that stays active. Uh, it looks like it's 38.6. So I'm not always sure of what the numbers are on the clock. Again, the main scoreboard here at the East Campus Stadium, not functional today. Four wideout formation for RPI. 
As they now see again a three-man rush by Buffalo State. They've got a man, that's Goldsmith inside the 20-10-5 touchdown. <laughs> 64-yard touchdown pass, and RPI leads 20-7. Stein out to try the extra point. Snap spot, kick is up, off the post and no good. Hits the left upright. So RPI holds at 20 points. RPI's mistake today, an interception, a fumble, which had they not fumbled, would have probably prevented Buffalo State from being on the board today. And now an extra point hits the upright. It's 20 to seven in favor of RPI as we're winding down on the first half here at the East Campus Stadium. <laughs> Buffalo State, the Dean game is the only game when they gave up only seven to Dean, it's the only game this year they have not given up at least 20 points now that RPI has hit the 20 mark. For a game where RPI has a two score lead, in terms of offensive yards, they're leading 201 to 191. Kickoff goes out of bounds and Buffalo State will take this at the 35-yard line. The Buffalo State has to decide what to do. They can run the clock out. RPI does not have enough timeouts to get the ball back, so they can run the clock out here if they wish to just take a knee. Looks like the Bengals are going to line up to run some plays. Kimball is out there. He's got three receivers on the right, as will be first and 10 for Buffalo State at the 35. He's at the 40. And now we're going to have another discussion because I thought the ball should be at the 35. And they're moving it back to the 35. There's, there seems to be some confusion here on a couple of placements of the ball, which to me were readily apparent. If the kickoff goes out of bounds, it goes to the 35, 30 yards beyond where it was kicked. The tee was left on the field. So RPI has to race somebody out to go get the tee for the kickoff. Okay, we've got everything squared away, we think. 29.4 seconds left in this first half. Buffalo State first and 10 at their own 35. Five wide out formation for Kimball. Low snap, picks it up, ball is knocked down and even for RPI, Sakard who knocked it down I think, didn't know where the ball went. It, it got knocked back behind the Bengals player, so it's incomplete on first down. That took very little time off the clock. We're down to 26.5 seconds left in this half. Second down and 10 at the 35. Multiple wideouts again for Buffalo State. Kimball throws, that is complete to Wilson. Wilson is going to have a first down as he caught it around the 40, makes it out to the 48, and he stopped there. 
They have to move the chains. We're down to 18.6 seconds left in the half. Buffalo State has three timeouts. Have they just used one? Yes. Buffalo State has used what I believe is their first timeout of the first half. So 18.6 seconds left in the half. RPI 20, Buffalo State 7. Both teams looking to get their first win in the league this year. And despite the score, the offense for Buffalo State has gotten 204 yards and RPI's 201. But the big difference, a big difference, is the punt return yards. RPI has 90 punt return yards, 89 of those coming off a punt return for a touchdown by Walker Sutton. What do they say? All statistics lie in some manner. Four wide receiver formation for Buffalo State. They've got it first and 10 at their own 48, running low on time here in the first half pass. That is complete to Jones at the 35, and that'll be another timeout. There's 12.8 seconds left, and Buffalo State's calling their second timeout of the half. In a first half that has seemed to have taken longer than you would think it should. Buffalo State down to one timeout now with 12.8 seconds left. Maybe three plays, depending on when, if you get out of bounds or not. Good sized crowd here for RPI. It is reunion and alumni weekend, however that is classified. Homecoming, it says on my little sheet here, homecoming for RPI. First and 10, Buffalo State to 35, low on time in this first half and down by 13. They're gonna go on the ground to Wilson who gets hit abruptly at the 32. And that's in the field of play. So Buffalo State with 5.1 seconds left uses their last timeout. I would assume the hope was Wilson would get free on that and get more yards than he did. Because once you dedicated yourself to going to the ground and going to the right like that and trying to string it out, that's going to take a chunk of time off the clock. It took more than half of the time left off the clock for Buffalo State. And then they had to burn the time out in order to get another play in. Too long, I think, for a field goal here. This would be a 39, this would be a 49 yard attempt if they're trying to kick. So, well, I, just as I say that, I see Chandra coming out onto the field. Kimball's the holder, so I saw him, but then I see Chandra coming out and they are going to try a 49 yard field goal. Very little wind right now. It's not going to help them much. And RPI is going to take a timeout. Okay, so they'll think this one over a little bit. Uh, new rule this year, you can't take, uh, one team cannot take consecutive timeouts. So RPI cannot burn the last one again before the play is set off. And Buffalo State doesn't have any more left. So once this timeout is over with, there will be a second down play, likely a Buffalo State field goal attempt. If you're curious, RPI returned a punt for a touchdown. The last time that happened to Buffalo State was the first game of the season against Broadport, who also returned. That was Rayland Boutin returned the kick for a punt for a touchdown. Snap, spot, 49-yard field goal attempt will not make it. 
That will fall short of the crossbar. And so on the missed field goal, time expires. And the teams will go into the locker room with RPI leading Buffalo State 20 to seven. So Buffalo State has crossed into RPI territory. They've been on RPI side of the field four times and out of their eight possessions. They've threatened. Uh, they got into the red zone twice. Effectively three, but really kind of twice because the fumble and the fumble again, it wasn't the same drive, but they were basically in the same possession. So Buffalo State has moved the ball. They've put yards on offense, 224 yards for Buffalo State to 201 for RPI, but uh, a short field for RPI, one long play for RPI, and a return punt for a touchdown for RPI. And it's RPI up three scores, or pardon me, two scores. They have three scores, Buffalo State one, and RPI is up by two scores in today's game. So Buffalo State has performed better statistically than what the score would indicate, but right now RPI is in the lead, and RPI will be getting the ball back to start out half number two. Time to take a break here at the East Campus Stadium as we'll run you down what happened in Liberty League football last weekend. The score after one half of play here in Troy, it is RPI 20 and Buffalo State 7. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy.
Union fan today because if Ithaca beats Union, they go to 3-0, and and they have probably at that point beaten the three strongest contenders besides themselves for the league title. Uh, Rochester having a good day against St. Lawrence today. They've got a lead. They've got a 22-7 lead at the half as well, as RPI does here against Buffalo State. Uh, Rochester's you know, on the, uh, maybe on the outside, an improved team. We'll have to see how that goes. They gave Union a run for their money. Uh, but if Ithaca wins that game, it's, it's going to be tough for somebody else to win the league this year. Uh, so people are rooting for Union right now against Ithaca. And again, at the half, that is Ithaca 10 and Union 3. Here, 22-7 RPI has the lead. For RPI on offense, Kazagnowski's 11 for 17 with one interception and two touchdowns today. Goldsmith leads the receivers for RPI, three receptions with 73 yards. Also, Faraday has three receptions with 33 yards. Both of them have a touchdown. Rushing is where RPI has not really moved the ball well. Uh, Kazagnowski has a net 18, Buckley a net 13, and White a minus five. So RPI's had trouble getting the ground game going in today's game. For Buffalo State, Cameron, the starting quarterback, is out. He was taken away uh, for medical treatment. Two of four for one interception. That interception led to an RPI touchdown. Kimball, his replacement, 5 of 11 with one touchdown. Receiving led by Jones, three receptions for 75 yards. Also, you have Bruce with one reception, 19 yards. That went for a TD. And rushing, Wilson has 59 net yards. Phillips, 18. Kimball, 14. Those are your leading rushers for Buffalo State. Start of the third quarter, Buffalo State kicking off to RPI. Walker Sutton takes it at his own four-yard line. To the 10, 15, to the 20. He's got a hold, 25, 30. He's free to the 40. Along the sideline to the 40 of Buffalo State, to the 30, and then finally caught. He is caught inside the 30-yard line. They'll have him down at the 27. So RPI starting out the second half at the Buffalo State 27-yard line after an excellent return by Walker Sutton. Piscaro on the tackle for Buffalo State prevents a touchdown. He was the only one left. He was able to just get him at the angle, just barely. If he had, if he had tried to get him a little bit sooner, he probably would have missed him. So first and 10, RPI at the 27 as we're underway here in quarter number three. RPI on the ground, Buckley goes straight ahead and he'll be stopped at the 25 yard line. For Buffalo State, coming to today's game, they were 0-2 in the Liberty League, and the Liberty League has not been kind to Buffalo State. Since they have joined through last week, the Bengals are one win, 19 losses in the league. Kazanowski fakes the handoff, throws before he's about to get hit. Kelly has it. Does he have the reception? Is he inbounds inside the 10? Yes. No rule, Kelly got the reception inbounds at the six yard line, and it'll be first and goal, RPI at the six. I was saying Buffalo State one and 19 in the league since they entered that only win, 2019 against Rochester. Handoff on first down, Buckley goes all the way to the left, now starts cutting it upfield and will not get past the Bengals defense. Uh, he ran out of room to stretch that out, had to go upfield and was ultimately stopped. Sincere Green on the tackle for Buffalo State at the five yard line. RPI looking to make this a three score game early here in quarter number three, up 20 to seven against Buffalo State. Kazagnowski gives to Buckley again. He goes left again and this time he'll make it in untouched. Five yard run by Buckley for the touchdown and RPI has a 26 to seven lead. Elstein out, Elstein out to try the extra point. <laughs> Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So it's RPI 27, Buffalo State 7.
So Buffalo State, if you're a longtime football fan and follow RPI, you can remember that Buffalo State had a lot of good teams back in the 1990s. And Buffalo State has made the NCAA tournament seven times, and those were all in the 90s. From 1992 to 1999, there were seven appearances. Twice they made it to the quarterfinals. That's back when it was a 16 uh, team tournament. It would be the second round now, one win and out. And then one loss would be the second round. Back then, it would be the equivalent of the third round now, the quarterfinals. So they had a lot of good teams in the 90s, and then things didn't go as well, let's put it that way, since that stretch. And it's been a tough slog this year as they have started off one and four. Elstein kicks the ball away, and that goes out of bounds, and it'll be Buffalo State's ball at the 35 again. I say again because the last time RPI kicked off, it went back to the 35. Buffalo State's offense coming out for the first time in the second half, trailing by three scores. <laughs> if I didn't mention, Hobart has a 28 to nothing lead on Hilbert in the first half. I, I believe that has not gotten, I don't think I have a halftime score for that. They have started the third quarter in Ithaca, still 10-3, Ithaca over Union. Here, Buffalo State has that their own 35. First and 10, trailing by 20 points. Kimball gives to Wilson. Wilson gets hit in the backfield, gets away from that, and he's gonna run out of bounds at the 37. Buffalo State came into the first half, in the second half, pardon me, with 93 rushing yards. Versus 34 for RPI, Buffalo State clearly having a better rushing game than RPI. Second and eight at the 37 for Buffalo State. Kimball throws, and that is knocked away. It was intended for Jones and knocked away by Garrett at the 50-yard line. Hundred and thirty-one passing yards for a Buffalo State in the first half versus 191 for RPI. 194 for RPI currently. Third down and eight at the 37 yard line. Kimball throws over the middle. That is complete and that's a first down. And some nice work on the run after reception by Brooks. He was short of the first down, got away from one man, did a good stiff arm and got enough yards and he gets a first down for the Bengals. Nope, we got a flag on the play. That's not going to count. Still, he did a good job. It's just not going to count. So holding against Buffalo State, that will back them up. Third and eight is going to become probably about third and 18. So the reception is wiped off the board. Third down for Buffalo State back at the RPI 28 yard line. Four wide out formation, three on the left for the Bengals. Three man rush for RPI. Kimball airs this one out and is that's along the sideline. Is it a catch? No, they're gonna rule he was out of bounds. They're gonna rule the receiver was out of bounds when he caught it and it's incomplete on third down. That was Anthony Bowman who caught the ball along the sideline. Checking the replay now. It happens pretty quick, but it looks to me like it's out of bounds. 
So the punt team comes out for Buffalo State as they were unable to get the ball with the penalty. They're back to the 28. They're actually going to lose yards on this series. They start at the 35. Chandra kicks it. It bounces right near the sideline, and Walker Sutton's not going for this one. He'll let it be down at the 30-yard line. Twelve twenty-one to go in this third quarter. RPI with the 27 to seven lead over Buffalo State. First and 10 for the engineers at the 31. On the ground and for RPI. That is Walker Sutton running the ball. So he does go in at running back at times. Usually he's lined up as a wide out. He goes into the backfield this time. And so Walker Sutton is up ahead to the 38. And RPI gains about seven on that play. He'll give it to Walker Sutton again. This time he runs straight into the line and he'll get pushed back. Nicholas Moore leading the charge for Buffalo State on defense. Walker Sutton gets one to the 39-yard line. And RPI in a third and two. RPI three for five on third downs in today's game. Kazaknowski wants to throw. It's a four-man rush and almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. It was in the hands of Kenneth Mosley, and he couldn't hold on to it. So it was almost an interception in Buffalo State's ball on RPI side of the field. Instead, it goes incomplete, and RPI is quickly in a three and out here. So Burke is back to punt for RPI. Mascaro is back at his own 25. And it's blocked, blocked by Buffalo State, picked up by the Bengals, and they'll take it in for the touchdown. That might be Makai Johnson. Number three ran that back. Makai Johnson is a wide receiver, or he's, he's listed as the offense. I don't know if there's multiple number threes. I don't think so. So it may be Johnson with the block, runs it in for the TD. Where they get the block, Johnson runs it in, and it's now RPI 27, Buffalo State 13. So Buffalo State gave up a touchdown on special teams when RPI returned at 89 yards, Walker Sutton for a touchdown, and now special teams gets them a touchdown with the block punt. Chandra out to try the extra point. Kimball with the hold, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So we have 11-16 to go in the third quarter, and things just got a little bit interesting here, a little bit more interesting, I should say, as the punt, the blocked punt return for a touchdown gives Buffalo State a couple of points. I don't know who got the block. I don't know if Johnson got the block and got it, or if somebody else got the block and then Johnson picked it up, waiting for the live stats update on that one. So it is Johnson on the return. It'll officially go into the books as 20 yards on the return. Kickoff is away. Walker Sutton takes it at his own two. To the 10, 15, to the 20, 25, and Walker Sutton dives ahead. He's around the 29. As RPI is quickly back out on offense. Both teams have had this now. A special teams touchdown has put the offense back out there very quickly.
And as RPI wants to build this up and make this a three-score game again. 27-14, RPI leads. 11.09 to go in the third. And RPI is getting penalized, so they are not starting at the 31. Or the 27, or wherever Walker Sutton stopped. They will be back just beyond the 14-yard line. So RPI with a long field, starting out at their own 14. Up by 13 in the third quarter. Kazagnowski fakes a handoff, keeps it himself. White went left, and Kazagnowski goes right, and he's up to the 25, and that should be a first down for RPI. Chains move. 11 to go here in quarter number three. RPI up 27 to 14. Kazagnowski on first down, wants to throw, and he has got a man, and he's got Meisner in Buffalo State territory, catches it inside the 45, tackled by Lestique, but it's a first down for RPI. Kazagnowski to Meisner, and he's at the, where are they gonna put him? 44, they're gonna put him at the 44 on Buffalo State side of the field. First and 10, RPI. Three receivers to the right. Allison, the tight end, is on the left. White's in the backfield with Kazagnowski. First down. Kazagnowski throws and intercepted by the Bengals. It's taken away by Mosley. Mosley will get tackled around the RPI, the, yeah, the RPI 45 in that area. So Mosley with the INT. And RPI turns it over again. And Buffalo State, a lot of life in this team. They went down three scores early in the second half. They were thinking maybe that's the way this game's going to go, but a block punt for a touchdown, now an INT, and Buffalo State is trying to close the gap here. We have 10.26 to go in the third quarter, which is very back and forth already. As Buffalo State, after the INT, takes over at the RPI 45. Mosley with the interception for Buffalo State. Kimball throws downfield, and that is incomplete. Uh, over through Nelson, who is all tied up with his coverage. But Buffalo State, after the INT, trying to hit something big downfield. Doesn't work. Yeah, for RPI, that was Dow, Ryan Dow on the coverage. He and Nelson were neck and neck, and the ball was beyond both of them. That brings up second down for Buffalo State at the RPI 45 yard line. Single wide out to each side. Kingle fit. Kimball fakes the handoff to Wilson, keeps it himself, and it gets ahead to the 41. Just a reminder for those who tuned in, Amir Cameron, the starting quarterback for Buffalo State, was injured, and ultimately they have taken him for medical attention. Third down and six for Buffalo State at the 41, so we're not expecting him back for the game, and Kimball, the number two quarterback, is out there for Buffalo State. So third and six, Buffalo State at the RPI 41. Jones goes in motion to the left. The snap. Kimball throws, looking for Jones downfield, just beyond his reach along the sideline. Fernandez was with him, but I think if that ball was thrown correctly, Jones would have had it. I think he probably would have been bumped out of bounds by Fernandez before he got to the end zone. But I think if the ball had been just a little bit thrown, underthrown just a little bit, I think he would have been able to get it without Fernandez getting in the way. So for Buffalo State, they've got a fourth and six at the RPI 41. Kimball takes the snap, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
He was looking for Jones at about the 25, but the pass was off target and it's incomplete and Buffalo State will turn it over on downs. RPI will get the ball back at their own 41. So that's the third time that Buffalo State has turned it over on downs in today's game. Yeah, 9.26 to go third quarter. RPI leading by 13. Buckley on the ground on first down. Gets through the line of scrimmage. Then, it, then encounters Cervantes and he doesn't get any farther. So he's out to the 43 for a pickup of three. We're gonna start them at the 40 on this drive. So RPI with a second down and seven at the 43 yard line. Hand off to Buckley and he hits his, he goes, runs into the back of his own lineman and he'll be down for a loss of one at the 42. Uh, again, it's really weird here at these campus stadiums to not have the scoreboard working. To look up and see nothing on the board and you say, how much time is left? How much is this? How much is that? And you look up and there's nothing there and I'm still not used to it. Third down and eight for RPI at the 42. Four wide receiver formation, Buckley in the backfield, Kazignowski. Kazignowski takes the snap, has time, looks, Faraday's got it at the 50 yard line and he stopped and now he gets back to the 50. They're gonna put his forward progress at the 49 and he is lucky. The 49 on the Buffalo State side, he's lucky because you could, you could reasonably argue he moved back on his own and may not have gotten all the way back to that 50. Uh, at the very end, it looks like he fell forward, but situational awareness is important in that situation. You gotta make sure that you stay on the right side of the marker. First and 10, RPI at the 50. Buckley straight ahead, powers through, and he gets down to the 43. So he started at the 49, down to the 43. It's a pickup of six for RPI. 27 to 14, RPI lead. Seven and a half to go here in quarter number three. Two receivers left, one right for RPI. Buckley again on the carry. Buckley moves forward. There's a crowd pushing him. He won't get to the first down line. He's going to be stopped at the 41. RPI still working on that rushing game. 21 attempts for 54 yards before that one. That's a 2.6 average today. And that's, if you want to be successful running, 2.6 isn't going to be the way to do it. Three receivers to the right, tight end on the left. RPI on a third and two. Kazignowski fakes the handoff. He runs it straight ahead and Kazignowski is down, Kazignowski is down to the 36 and that'll be a first down. RPI with a new set of downs at the 36. The Union has scored. Touchdown, waiting for the extra point on that. It's 10-9 Ithaca late in the third quarter out in Ithaca. Here it is, 27-14 RPI, first and 10 at the Buffalo State 36. White with the handoff, goes to the right, dances around, escapes a couple of the defenders, and he'll get stopped around the 33. There's six minutes left in this third quarter. This is RPI's fourth offensive possession in the third quarter. They only had five offensive possessions in the first half. Second and seven at the 33. Kazignowski over the middle throws, that is complete. It's taken by Nicholson. Does RBI have Nicholson in there, number eight? Looks like it. 
Yep, that is Nicholson, number eight for RPI on the reception. And he's down to the 21, and that's a first down for RPI. This is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. On first down, Allison throw, or pardon me, Kasigowski throws it to Allison in the flat on the left, and he's out of bounds at the 13. I was saying this is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Sutt on the call for you today. RPI up 27-14 with 5-10 to go in the third quarter. It's in the 50s here in Troy. The lights are on, but I don't sure you really need that, but it, it is overcast, but we're not expecting any bad weather for the rest of the game. RPI with a second and a little over two at about the 13-yard line, just outside the 13-yard line. Kazanowski fakes the hand off the white, keeps it himself, and his forward progress may have gotten him a first down to the 11. Sincere Green in on a tackle there for Buffalo State. And they'll say he's down to 12. He did not make the first down. So it'll be third. No, now they're going to put it back to the 13. Okay. So a third and two for RPI. Two receivers to the left, and that's where Kazagnowski is looking in the flat. He gets it to Allison. Can Allison get the first down? He does. He does. Nicholas Bratt was a defender in front of him. Alice was able to get over him, fall over him, and get the yards for the first down. As Bratt came up, hit him right near where he had to go, and Allison's able to fall forward and get a few more yards. And it's a first and goal RPI at the nine. Up by 13 points here. Kazagnowski, can he get away from pressure? No, he will get sacked. Kazagnowski is sacked back at the 18-yard line. Green on the sack for Buffalo State. I believe that's the first sack of Kazagnowski today. Buffalo State was usually going with three-man rushes in the first half, and I've been seeing more four-man rushes in the second half. So the ball's all the way back to the 17-yard line, and it'll be second and a goal from the 17. 3.15 to go, third quarter. RPI up 27-14. Four wide out formation for Kazagnowski. Again, another four man rush, holding call against RPI. It's a pass complete to Goldsmith around the seven, but this is coming back on a hole. I could, the Buffalo State coaches are to my right, and they immediately yelled out, started yelling about a hold. And the referee threw a flag shortly after they said that. So I'm going to go with their expertise, and now the referee signals the same thing. So again, Darren Tyson, the referee for today's game. So the hold's going to back RPI up some more. They had it first and goal inside the 10, and now it's going to be second and goal at the 27. RPI going the wrong way. Allison's in the slot on the right, three wide outs. White is the back, the running back for RPI. Kazagnowski looking for White, and that's just way off target. I don't know if he was looking for White or if he thought Faraday, who was ahead of White, was going to run a different route. It was between the two of them, closer to White, but not on target to either. So second down, kind of a waste there for RPI. It'll be third down and goal at the 27. Two receivers each side, White in the backfield. Kasignowski out of the shotgun on third and goal from the 27. He throws and he finds a man, but it's not going to be a first down as the best, or a touchdown, pardon me, the best that Nicholson could get is to the 12 yard line. So RPI is going to send out Elstein try a field goal here, We're looking at about a 29-yard attempt. This will be from the right hash. It'll still be a two-score game if they get it, but it'll be a 16-point lead. The toughest of the two-score leads. Or the, two, I should say, two-score deficits, deficits to come back from, if RPI makes the kick. 
29 yard attempt. Snap spot. The kick is up. Almost blocked. There was a, I don't know how that got missed by Biscaro. The kick is good, and RPI now leads 30 to 14. But Biscaro came in, looked like untouched. Yeah, and he just missed that. Just missed that. So RPI gets the field goal. We have 205 to go here in the third quarter. 205 left to go. And RPI up 30 to 14 over Buffalo State. So it looks like Union missed the conversion, and they still trail Ithaca 10 to 9 at the end of quarter number three. So Union's still behind there. RPI kicks it away, a short kick taken by an up man at about the 25 yard line. This will go out to the 30. Eh. Beyond the 30 yard line, Buffalo State will be starting out. Their third possession of this third quarter. Thirty-three yard line is where they'll put it. RPI with 335 yards of total offense. On first down, Buffalo State's going to run it to the left. They'll get about two yards before they're hit. RPI, 335 yards of total offense today, 231 for Buffalo State. So Buffalo State on first down, they rush left and they get it out to the 36. As it'll be second and about seven for the Bengals. Kimball throws, and that is complete out to the 40-yard line to Julian Maloney. I think that's the first time I called his name. Maloney ends up moving up the yards to the 43, and that'll be a first down for Buffalo State. Buffalo State in their road whites with dark numbers, dark helmets, dark pants. Generally an easy font to read, except for that weird nine that confused me earlier in the game. Ball to 43 for a first and 10. Man in motion, two wideouts. Is that Phillips in it? Yes, Phillips is there. Kimball not in it running back. Phillips took the snap, and he runs straight ahead to the 45. So we saw earlier where they had Wilson in at the theoretical quarterback position. He was taking the snap, but he was running the ball every time. And this time they do it with Phillips back there instead. Pickup of two, and Buffalo State is out to the 45-yard line. Second down and eight. Kimball throws right as he gets hit, and he overthrows the intended receiver. He was looking for Jones downfield, overthrows him. And we've got a flag on the opposite side of the field. Did they just signal face mask? No, defensive holding. So RPI is going to get called for defensive holding, and that'll be an automatic first down for Buffalo State. It's 10 yards and an automatic first down. So as time is winding down here in quarter number three, We've got 4.3 seconds left in the quarter. 
incomplete pass to stop the clock. It'll be first and 10 for Buffalo State at the RPI 45. 30 to 14, RPI leads this game. Yeah. Kimball turns around, hands it off to Phillips. Phillips finding room on the left. He gets to the 40 as time expires in quarter number three. RPI outscores Buffalo State 10 to seven in this quarter. RPI with a touchdown, Buffalo State then with a touchdown, both got the extra points, and RPI with a field goal. And RPI currently has the 30 to 14 lead. RPI has outscored Buffalo State in every quarter of today's game. Not that that matters, except for the fact that you're getting more points than the other team. It doesn't matter if you win quarters or not. Teams will switch sides for quarter number four. Let's talk about Buffalo State. They made the NCAA many times, the seven times in the 90s and not made it since. They have made some ECAC appearances. They are four and two postseason in the ECAC. The last time they won a postseason game was 2014 when they defeated Waynesburg 59 to 36. Again, they come into this game in the Liberty League. Overall, one win, 19 losses. And it's been difficult for Buffalo State to find their footing. Second season for their head coach, Lazarus Morgan. So he has only got two, at best, recruiting classes. He, I think, it, I think Coach, I talked to Coach Tony. He got hired in March. On second down, handoff goes to Phillips, and Phillips has got the first down, uh, finally pushed to the ground as he got to the 31-yard line. Von Tobel, one of the members of RPI, in on the tackle, also a flag afterwards, and Buffalo State is indicating that it's against RPI. RPI at this point has seven penalties for 65 yards. That is not good. I think if you're RPI coming from the Ithaca game last week to this week, this is not as clean a game for RPI. Of course, there were four turnovers last week, but RPI's turned the ball over three times actually today. Two interceptions and then lost the fumble after they had gotten the fumble. Same play back in the second quarter. RPI got a fumble and then gave it away. You have the three turnovers, but you have, this is going to be the eighth penalty against RPI today. So it looks to me like that was a personal foul against RPI. And I thought he said that the offender was ejected from the game, but I could not hear that clearly up here. Ball to 16 yard line for Buffalo State, first and 10, as they trail by 16. And Kimball fakes the handoff, he's gonna run left, he's to the 10, he's to the five, flag comes out. And I think this one's going against Buffalo State because as Kimball, uh, Tariq Nelson threw his hands up in frustration as just after Nelson went past him and the flag came out, I think this might be against him. Okay, so there were two holding calls, neither one against Nelson, so I was wrong on that. But there were two holding calls against Buffalo State, and one's declined, one's accepted. So Buffalo State will get backed up to the 26-yard line. So they started out first and 10 to 16, now it'll be first and 20 back at the 26. Uh, both teams have to be unhappy with their penalty situation in today's game. We're in the fourth quarter here in Troy, 30 to 14, RPI leads. 14.35 to go in this fourth quarter.
And pass in the flat, complete to Wilson, to the 30, to the 25, and Wilson's going to get hit at the 22, and he's stopped there by Johnson. So he picks up, in the end, about four yards. Ran quite a, quite a long right way, but ended up only picking up four yards on the play. Okay, so that's, that was success Frederick who got the personal foul called against him. On second down, if passed, that will be Nelson incomplete. Looking for Nelson around the 15 yard line. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. Yes, he was out of bounds, so incomplete pass on second down. It'll be third down and about 16 for Buffalo State. So success, Frederick. Call for the personal foul. He is not out there right now. And I believe he was ejected from the game. Quick scan, I don't see him on the sideline either. So third down and about 16 for Buffalo State. Kimball throws end zone, that is intercepted. And RPI is gonna take a knee in the end zone. That is Cassius Johnson on the INT for RPI. Uh, his momentum took him into the end zone, so he'll just take the knee and bring it out to the 20 as Buffalo State turns it over. We have 13.37 to go in today's game. RPI up 30 to 14, and they'll have it first down and 10 at their own 20. After Buffalo State's INT. to make this a three-score game and really put this one away. On first down, RPI gets very little. One yard on the rush. So I'm hearing, I'm, I'm, I'm listening on the sidelines. I can hear the coach talking, and he's talking. It looks like it was a targeting play. Looks like it was a targeting call against Frederick, and he can't play. He's out this half, and he won't be allowed to play the first half of next, week's in, next weekend's game up at St. Lawrence. So second down and nine RPI at the 21-yard line. Uh, a lot of pressure in Kazagnowski right now. 20, 25, runs out of bounds at the 30, so he'll get a first down. Buffalo State has changed their defensive scheme. They're, they are now rushing four consistently. In the first half, they would only rush three. Now they're rushing four. But if Kasignowski gets away from that, he's got a bit more room in the rest of the field to work with. Obviously, he wasn't sacked in the first quarter, I don't believe. And it's difficult if you're not getting pressure on the quarterback to force mistakes or make other things happen. So more pressure, but also a bit more opportunity if he decides to run with it. First and 10, RPI at the 30. 12 and a half to go here, fourth quarter. RPI up by 16. And rush play straight ahead is not going to get anything for RPI. More on defense for Buffalo State. Uh, grabs Buckley immediately and, and stops him after a gain of one. That would be his sixth tackle today for Moore. I would have thought he had a greater number than that. Second down and nine at the 31 for RPI. And Buckley takes the handoff. He was gonna go outside, makes, actually, he was gonna go more to the right, then decided to cut it upfield. I thought it was gonna close off fast on him, but instead he gets it through for a first down, and he's all the way out to the 41 yard line. So RPI moves the chains again. With a 16 point lead at this point, you just want to knock some clock off here, and if you at least get a field goal, it's a three-score game. Handoff on first down, gets RPI about one. As Walker Sutton is in the backfield now, along with Buckley, Walker Sutton with that carry. He gets out to the 42 of RPI.
Second down, Walker Sutton again. He's going to string this one out to the right, goes towards the sidelines. He gets pulled out of bounds by Mosley, uh, and he's out of bounds just beyond, in between the 48 and the 49. That'll set up a third and about two and a half for RPI. In Ithaca, they are in the fourth quarter, nine and a half to go in that game, and Ithaca now has a 17 to nine lead on Union. Union, the only undefeated team overall among the Liberty League teams, and Ithaca and Union, the only undefeated teams in the Liberty League. Third and two and a half for RPI. Kazanowski fakes the handoff to Buckley, keeps it himself straight ahead, and he will get the first down out to the 43 yard line. Cervantes on the tackle for Buffalo State, but RPI moves the chains. We have 10.25 to go here in quarter number four. RPI with the 30 to 14 lead on Buffalo State. First and 10 RPI. Kazanowski doesn't go to the ground, sends it to Allison along the sidelines. That's complete. He's inside the 30, and that's another RPI first down. We move to under 10 to play in this fourth quarter. RPI up 30 to 14. First and 10 at the Buffalo State 28-yard line. Single wide out to each side, RPI keeps it in tight with most players. Buckley takes the carry and he's going to be down at the 26. So that's a gain of two. RPI keeping the clock running with either completed passes or more frequently just keeping the ball on the ground and running the clock down now to 9.10 to go. Second down and eight at the 26 yard line. Handoff goes to Buckley. Buckley finds some room on the right, breaks a couple of tackles. He's got another first down as he makes it down to the 11. So RPI moves the chains again. We have 8.35 to go, fourth quarter. RPI 30, Buffalo State 14. Down to 10 seconds on the play clock. RPI is running these play clocks down pretty low now. They just get the snap off. On the ground, Buckley, 10, five, Buckley's in for the touchdown. <laughs> Buckley runs it in from 11 yards out and RPI leads 36 to 14. Elstein out, Elstein out to try the extra point. Snap, Meisner with the hold, kick is up, and the kick is good. 37 to 14, RPI leads with 8.16 to go. So now it's a three score game in RPI's favor. Buffalo State, their touchdowns came a 19-yard pass back in the second quarter with one minute to go, and then the blocked punt that was running by Johnson from 20 yards out for a TD. So the offense, out of the 14 points, the offense has contributed seven, 
And you can say special teams has contributed seven. And right now, Buffalo State with 8.16 to go. They need that offense, assuming no special teams touchdowns. They need the offense to get three. And some bonus points on the conversion. Kickoff by RPI. That was Merrick, it looked like, kicking off the ball. And it's taken by Buffalo State. That is Jones has it, and he's going to get pushed back. But forward progress is going to have Jones out at the 24. He got pushed back almost to the 15. But forward progress at the 24-yard line, that's where Buffalo State starts out, down by 23 points in the fourth quarter. It is Ithaca 17, Union 9 with 7.29 to go in the fourth quarter. It looks like Ithaca's got the ball right now, too. Yes, Ithaca currently has possession of the ball. So the Dutchman may be seeing uh, a potential undefeated season go by the way and also fall behind in the Liberty League. First down, Kimball hands off to Wilson and he is stopped at the 26. Hundred and nineteen rushing yards for Buffalo State today's game, but RPI now has 127. That was a lot of ground action by RPI on that last drive. So they now have more rushing yards and they have more receiving yards, 288 to 142 in today's game. Kimball puts the ball up in the air on second down, and is that caught? Yes, that is caught. Great catch by Bruce, and Bruce is going to be in for the touchdown. He was on one. On, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage along the left sideline. And Bruce made a really good catch. The coverage was basically with him, but the defender didn't know where the ball was. So he didn't get a hand up, and Bruce got it, and then he got away from the defender and ran it in for the touchdown. So 37 to 20 RPI leads as Buffalo State strikes back quickly. Chandra out for the extra point attempt. It's up, it is good. So again, that's 7.28 left to go. It took less than a minute for Buffalo State to strike back and get that touchdown. So this one isn't over here in Troy. Back to a 16 point lead. As how many yards was that? I'm waiting for this to come up on live stats because I forgot the number of yards. 74 yards. And that was Kimball to Bruce on the touchdown pass. That is the second time that they have connected for a touchdown in today's game. Buffalo State kicks it away. Walker Sutton takes it to 12, 15, 20, 25, and tripped up. Literally, somebody got him by somebody got him by the leg as he was coming up on the 30-yard line, and he had room to move, but wasn't able to do anything with it. I think he may have tripped over a guy who was just on the ground. I think one of the Buffalo State players was involved with an, a block and had no idea that Walker Sutton was behind him and his leg just tripped him. It was, I mean, it's not a trip penalty, it just happened. It's one of those things. So RPI has it at the 29 yard line for a first and 10. And RPI is keeping it on the ground and they'll give it to Buckley and Buckley will get it out to the 37 yard line. If RPI can keep it on the ground like it did on their last drive where they eight over five minutes off the clock in getting a touchdown. If you do that here, you're, you're effectively end the game. We're coming up on seven minutes to go here in Troy. Fourth quarter, RPI 37, Buffalo State 21. Yeah. 
Second down and about two for RPI. Buckley again, finds a hole to the right, breaks into the open, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, along the sidelines, and he's still on his feet, still on his feet, finally pushed out by Butcher, and he'll be out where? Where did they finally push him out? It was inside, the, it was at the 20-yard line. They're gonna put him right at the 20. So Buckley made his way through the holes, and then got free, and then finally, one guy reached for him and missed his legs, and then Butcher came along and pushed him out at the 20-yard line. So first down, RPI at the Buffalo State 20. 6.20 to go in today's game. RPI up by 16. Kazignowski, new running back. That is Ming in there for RPI. Stays on his feet, keeps fighting, and Ming is down to the 11. So RPI getting some, that's Damian Ming in at running back for RPI. So RPI getting some substitutions in there. As today's game is winding down, under six minutes to go in today's game. Second down and two for RPI. Walker Sutton in the backfield, gets away from one man behind him. Now he's going to get inside the 10, still on his feet. He'll be gang tackled down to two, and it'll be a first and goal RPI. So RPI went up by three scores. Buffalo State answered back quickly with a 74 yard touchdown pass, but now RPI has also rather quickly moved down the field. It's a little over two minutes. They've had the ball. Walker Sutton takes the ball, and he's going to get stopped inside the five. He probably stopped at the line of scrimmage, and it'll be second and goal RPI. 4.33 to go in Ithaca, and it is still Bombers leading Union at 17 to nine. Here, second down and goal for RPI from about the two. We're under five, we're at about 4.45 to play in today's game. Fake the handoff to Walker Sutton. Kazignowski is alone, going to the right. Escapes one man, flag in the end zone, and Kazignowski's in for the touchdown, but what's the flag? That becomes the question. Buffalo State, the, the kick, they were about to change personnel, but then they were told, no, come back and wait on this one. And RPI is sending out the kick team. It's defensive holding, so it is a touchdown RPI. Uh, even the scoreboard this time is waiting on this one. Uh, so RPI now leads 43-21. There's four and a half left to play in today's game. Elstein on to try the extra point. Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 44 to 21, RPI has the lead. Kazignowski with the two-yard run. Puts RP up by three scores again. RPI possessions in the second half. Touchdown, blocked punt returned by Buffalo State for a touchdown. Interception, field goal, touchdown, and then touchdown. And the last play, the last possession of the first half was also a touchdown. So 11 times RPI's had the ball, seven times it's resulted in a touchdown, except that one of them was the other way.
Merrick is out to kick off for RPI. Taken at the five yard line. 10, 15, Jones is to the 20, 25, 30, sideline, 40, and Jones will finally get caught by RPI as a very nice return. Gets it out past the Buffalo State 45 yard line. So Buffalo State will have it about the 47. As the time now says 420 left on the clock in this fourth quarter. So it looks like Union had the ball in Ithaca, and, and we've got a penalty now against Buffalo State on the run back. So they're not getting it at the 42 or the 47. They are going to be back far deeper in their own territory. The infraction occurred at the 17-yard line, and the ball will go back down to the 9. So that's a loss of about 38 yards from where they would have had the ball. Anyway, I was talking about, it looks like uh, Union had the ball, and with 2.07 to go, trailing by eight, they were intercepted by Ithaca, and it's now Ithaca's ball. So that's still an eight point lead for Ithaca. Late in the game. Five wide out formation for Buffalo State as they are trailing by 23. Kimball throws and is it caught? It is caught. It's caught by Nelson at about the 35 in double coverage. They'll put that ball right at the 35 yard line. He had two defenders on him. Right around him. I mean they, they were, that was Borkowski and Dow were right there. But the ball comes in to Nelson, he catches it, and it's a first down for Buffalo State at the 35. 44-21 RPI leads, four minutes to go here in the East, at East Campus Stadium. And they're gonna go down along the sidelines again, and that is caught again. And that's gonna be Nelson in for the touchdown. That's a 65 yard touchdown pass to Nelson. And Buffalo State closes the gap again. So Kimball to Nelson for 65 yards, and it's 44-27 RPI. The scoring just won't stop in this one. They went to Nelson on double coverage, got it to him, and that time it was single coverage, got it to him, and it was a touchdown. Chandra out to try the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So we have 3.49 to go in Troy, and it's now 44-28 in favor of RPI. So there's still time left for Buffalo State here. Touchdowns on their last two possessions. And it's possessions 12 and 13 officially, and it was just the final possession of the first half. No, actually, no, the next to last possession of the first half for them where they got the other offensive touchdown. The first touchdown for Buffalo State today was the blocked punt return for a TD. So what does Buffalo State do now? They need two touchdowns and they're low on time. By my count, they have all three timeouts left. Do they go for an onside kick here? RPI has the hands team out. I can see Goldsmith out there. McGoey, Buckley, Meissner. They're all on the front line there for RPI. Here's the kick, and it's gonna be a short kick. It only goes six yards. So Buffalo State's just going to pick it up, and it's going to be RPI's ball. Had to go 10, it only went six. So it was either wait for RPI to try to pick it up, which RPI was probably not going to do, or Buffalo State picks it up, and nope, 
you can't do that, so RPI gets the ball. The referee's looking at Coach Isernia, asking him, what do you want to do? Do you want to make them re-kick, or do you want what? And he's like, no, no, take the ball. Give us the ball. Okay, so there was a flag. There was an offsides call against Buffalo State on the kick. So that's that's what the question was. And then an illegal touch. So RPI declined the offsides and says, no, we don't want to kick this one again. We'll just take the ball where it was touched, which was the 41. So RPI has it at the Buffalo State 41-yard line. 3.49 to go in today's game. RPI substitution. Ming is in there at running back, and now we have DiMatteo in at quarterback. So DiMatteo in at the quarterback position for RPI as time is winding down. Buffalo State just took a timeout. They have no choice. They want, it's only two scores down. If they want to win this, they need to get this ball back. And the only way to do that is to call timeout while RPI is going to very gladly run the ball and force Buffalo State to take timeout. So that's what we've got coming up for you on the next two plays. Uh, if this goes according to script. It'll be RPI running the ball and Buffalo State calling a timeout. 16 point lead for RPI. If Buffalo State wants to get back, they're going to be forced to go for two point conversions. So DiMatteo is out there again at QB. Is that Young or Ming at running back? I can't tell if it's 26 or 36. Doesn't matter. is gonna take the ball himself. He's gonna run to the right and he's gonna get pulled down at the 35. And that was Mosley taking him down to 35 yard line and that'll be another timeout by Buffalo State. No, no, yes, 326 is on the clock. I think they called the timeout before it, it got to 326. So that's a second timeout for Buffalo State in this half. Start of the fourth quarter, Rochester 30, St. Lawrence 13. That is a improved Rochester team of what we've seen in years past. Gave Union a run for their money. And then Hobart 49 and Hilbert nothing. That's not an unexpected score there. So third down and four for RPI. One timeout remaining for Buffalo State. RPI leading by 16, balls at the 35 yard line. They're having clock trouble. It suddenly flashed 15. And now it's at 332, where it should be. Third down and about four. Ming takes the handoff, cuts up field. He will not get the first down. So Buffalo State will call their final timeout. And it'll be fourth down for RPI. Fourth down and about three with 3.26 to go. RPI, which was lagging in the running game earlier, as I, saw, I mentioned that, especially in the first half, RPI now has 204 rushing yards today versus 121 for Buffalo State. Receiving yards, Buffalo State with some big gainers leads RPI 307 to 288. So RPI with 493 yards on 73 plays today and Buffalo State 428 yards on 59 plays. So the offensive numbers are not that different, but it is a 16 point lead for RPI. And both teams have a special teams touchdown as well.
Offense will be out there for RPI on fourth down and three at the 34 yard line. 3.26 to go in today's game. RPI up by 16. DiMatteo is the quarterback. A first down would basically ice it here. Uh, if not, then it's going over to Buffalo State. Now it'll be a first down. Ming runs to the right. He gets three to the 20, 15, 10, 5, and Ming is in for the touchdown. Ming runs it in from the 34, and RPI again has that a three-score lead. That is the fifth touchdown scored in the fourth quarter between the two teams. 50 to 28, RPI looking to make this 51 to 28. Snap the spot, the kick is up and Elstein's kick is good. Make that 51 to 28 with 3.17 to go in the game. This one is taking some time to finish here at the East Campus Stadium. As we'll see what happens now, every time that RPI has made it a three score lead, Buffalo State has come back to score. So we'll see if Buffalo State can do that again. They've got time, they have no timeouts, but they do have 317 on the clock. But now they need three touchdowns and some two point conversions in there in an attempt to get this one back. RPI has never trailed in today's game. There have been no lead changes since RPI scored the first score on the first, their first drive of the game. Low kick, and that's gonna be taken by one of the up men for Buffalo State, and he's not gonna get very far. He will be tackled beyond the 27 yard line. Buffalo State will start out there. So it looked like the Ithaca Union game, the live stats had stalled, but apparently there was some rough housing in that game because there were four unsportsmanlike conduct penalties called after one play where uh, Ithaca had the ball. So may have taken some time to sort that out and then get it into the live stats, but it's still 17 to nine Ithaca in the fourth quarter out in Ithaca. Here RPI 51 to 28, they lead. Buffalo State has the ball at their own 28. Kimball throws, and that is complete, and that'll be a first down. Bruce has it at the 48, 49. We'll call it the 49 on the Buffalo State side of the field, so that'll be a first down for Buffalo State. No timeouts left for the Bengals. Four wide out formation. Kimball throws over the middle, and that is incomplete. Looking for Bruce at about the 25 yard line, but couldn't make the connection. So clock stops and Buffalo State has time to rethink this one as the ball's at the 49 on their side of the field. It is a final out in Ithaca, Ithaca 17, Union 9. So first loss of the season for Union. And that means Ithaca at 3-0 is in the driver's seat in the Liberty League. They are the only undefeated team left in the league. Second down and 10 at the 49. Kimball throws, intercepted by the engineers. Davis has it. Davis to the 45, to the 50. He's gonna run out of bounds at the Buffalo State 49. And that's basically gonna do it for today's game. Two forty-one to go here in Troy. And RPI's got the ball at the Buffalo State 49 yard line. There is a flag on the play. <laughs> 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 
unsportsmanlike conduct against Buffalo State. So RPI will go from the 49 down to the 34. Not that critical at this stage of the game. RPI up 51 to 28 on Buffalo State with only 2.41 to go. And Buffalo State out of timeout. So RPI can just run the ball and take time off the clock. RPI on first down, on the ground. And they'll get about nine yards out of this. We've got a substitution. Aarons is now in it running back for RPI. So Aarons will get it down to about the, eh, maybe a little less than I thought. He's down to the 27. Second down and about three for RPI. 2.10 to go in today's game. RPI up by 23. A lot of offensive substitutions for RPI. Aarons takes the carry again. He's got the first down, and he'll be inside the 20, down around the 19, as we're under two minutes to go in the game. Clock stops as the chains move. One forty-five to go in the game. RPI doesn't have to snap this until there's under a min minute and a half to go. He'll snap it now. Handoff goes to Aarons, and Aarons will get stopped at the 23. He's going to lose a couple of yards, but time is the big thing here. And that was first down. So now it goes to second down and long, but there's a minute 20 left. So there's only 80 seconds left. RPI only has to snap it two more times and they're going to win the game today. Rochester has a 37 to 26 lead on St. Lawrence. With about 418 to go in the fourth quarter. So that's an 11 point lead there. Hobart's winning big over Hilbert, so they're going to pick up that non-conference win. RPI in the victory formation. Three seconds left on the play clock and DiMatteo is going to take a knee. RPI has to do this again on third down, and that will be the, the game here as Buffalo State has no timeouts and cannot stop the clock. It'll be an RPI 51 to 28 victory as we are under 40 seconds to play. So RPI is just going to go out, snap it now, and that's it. There'll be no more snaps in today's game. Just to make it, it'll be 30 seconds, it'll be official. It's not official now, but it will be in 30 seconds. RPI with the win here today. Teams are moving out for the handshakes. We're still 10 seconds away from this actually being a final, but it will be a final very shortly as RPI picks up the win here. And it's done. It's a final here in Troy. RPI 51 and Buffalo State 28. Now, if you're an RPI fan, this is a game you were, you were expecting a win here. You were, you, if you look at the records of the two teams, you look at the way they performed, you were coming into this game thinking this, is, this should be an RPI win, and it was. Uh, but you're also thinking this is, a, this is an improved Buffalo State team from what has happened in previous years. I know their record doesn't show it. It, it looks at one and four, and you look at some of these numbers, and they're not good uh, for the games. But th this, this was a more competitive team than I think people were, were looking for. Even Coach Izerny was talking about how it's, they're building the program. It's, it's the coach's second season. He doesn't have, he really doesn't have two full seasons of recruiting in here. Uh, trying to get players in to play what he wants to play. And this was a team that didn't quit. There were teams that if you fall behind three scores, maybe that's it, you feel it's not gonna happen. And Buffalo State kept coming back. They kept chipping away, trying to get that down to two scores, down to one score. Not always successful. They were not successful in doing that, but they didn't give up, and they kept playing hard all the way through. So this is 
I think both teams are going to go back and look at this, and they're going to have things that they like and things they didn't like. Obviously, the turnovers, Buffalo State was six last week. Turnovers didn't help them either here. But RPI was four last week and also had some turnovers today. Uh, so it was a high-scoring game. It was uh, a, one of the longer games you're going to see. And I think if you're an RPI fan, you can be happy that homecoming weekend, RPI got a win. And if you're Buffalo State, it's tough to go one in five but I, I think the, the program looks like it's headed in the right direction here. Uh, and I, I think it, it's a program, next year I wouldn't be surprised if some of these losses they have start turning into wins. Let's say that about Buffalo State. I think there's a lot, there's more talent here than we've seen in previous years. Uh, and RPI, you get to win this week, RPI improves their record, uh, pick up their first win in the Liberty League, but you're also looking at, uh, this is a team that wants to get back to the NCAAs, and that just got a lot tougher with uh, Ithaca winning against Union. The chances for RPI to win the league this year just, Ithaca's gotta take two losses basically over the rest of the season, the next three weeks. They gotta take two losses for RPI to have a, a chance because they lose a tiebreaker to Ithaca, and I think that's a, a grim opportunity there for those losses to come along. So that's just looking like out of town. Uh, so let's go down the scoring in today's game. There was a lot of it. Uh, RPI got on the board first. First drive for them of the game after they intercepted Buffalo State on the first play from scrimmage. Kazignowski to Faraday for a four yard pass with 12.54 to go in the first quarter. Elstein's kick made it seven nothing RPI. That was a score after one quarter. And if you were here at the East Campus Stadium, you're thinking seven points after one quarter. I wasn't expecting that low a scoring game, which it turned out not to be, uh, but that's the way it started out. 8.43 to go in the first half. Uh, Walker Sutton with an 89-yard punt return for a touchdown. Elspine's kick made it 14-0 RPI. And then Kimball connected to Bruce for a 19-yard pass with one minute to go in the first half. Chandra with the kick. Buffalo State got on the board first time today. It was RPI 14-7, but then uh, RPI got a 64-yard touchdown pass with 30 seconds to go in the first half. Uh, and our, the extra point hit the left upright, and it was RPI 20-7, to and that's where they went in at halftime. In the third quarter, with 13.34 to go in the third quarter, RPI made it a three-score game. Buckley with a five-yard run. Elstein's kick made it 27-7 RPI. But again, like I said, Buffalo State answered back. 11-16 to go in the third quarter. Johnson with a 20-yard punt block return on special teams. Chandra's kick made it 27-14 RPI. Then RPI again increased the lead. Elstein with a 29-yard field goal and at the end of the third quarter, 205 to go in the quarter. Made it 30-14 to RPI. That was the score after three. In the fourth, with 8-16 to go in the game, Hard to believe there were five touchdowns in the last 8-16 of the game, but there were. Uh, Buckley with an 11-yard run. Elstein's kick made it 37-14 RPI with 7.28 to go in the game. Buffalo State uh, able to Bruce for 74 yards. Chandra's kick made it 37-21 RPI. Then RPI increased it again to three scores. Kazagnowski with a two-yard run with 4.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Elstein's kick made it 44-21 in favor of RPI. Again, Buffalo State not dying. 3.49 to go in the fourth quarter. A touchdown, a 65-yard pass. Kimball to Nelson. Chandra's kick made it 44-28 RPI. And then RPI Ming with a 34-yard run with 3.17 to go. Elstein's kick made it a final. 51-28 in RPI's favor. With the win, RPI improves to 5-1 on the season. They are 1-1 one one in the Liberty League. With the loss, Buffalo State falls to 1-5 overall. And now they are 0-3 in the Liberty League. And I should remind you at this point, you are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. RPI just picking up a win here. Homecoming weekend, wrapping it up for you. For Buffalo State, they are home in a non-conference game against Hilbert next Saturday. That's a 5 p.m. start. And for RPI, they are on the road. They are on the road for three of the last four this season. They're on the road at St. Lawrence. That's a one o'clock start next Saturday. So for your engineers of the game, it, it was a weird game. It was tough for the offense to get going at times in the first half. And then things just all came together for actually both sides in the second half. Uh, but for RPI, 
offensive player of the game we're going to go with buckley the running back this was a running game that had trouble going in the first half and then second half suddenly boom r p i was being able to run whenever they wanted and a lot of that was buckley buckley with nineteen attempts hundred twenty one yards on the net and two touchdowns in today's game so buckley is my r p i offensive player of the game and if you look on defense we had three interceptions here by RPI. We're gonna go with Garrett on defense. Eight tackles and an interception for RPI. And he's the RPI defensive engineer of the game. So that's Cortez Garrett on defense and Christian Buckley on offense. Those are the offensive and defensive engineers of the game. That's gonna do it for us here at the East Campus Stadium. It's homecoming weekend. A lot of people here on campus, a lot of things for people to do and a lot of things going on. So it's time to hit the road. We would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to wrpi.org, and you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're sending something over the air, we'll provide it for you on that feed. That is wrpi.org. I would like to thank Excel at the station for making sure we got uh, over the air. Again, our next football broadcast will be next Saturday, RPI at St. Lawrence. That is a one o'clock start up at, I think it's Lucky Bee Stadium. It, it'll be up at St. Lawrence. It's, it's picturesque up there. I mean, there's not a lot there. It's picturesque. But we, we will be at St. Lawrence next Saturday at 1 o'clock, RPI versus St. Lawrence in Liberty League action. My name is Kurt Stunt. I would like to thank you for listening to today's game here on WRPI. The final score here from the East Campus Stadium, it was RPI 51 and Buffalo State 28. And you've been listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy.